So I was recently on Instagram and I saw this realtor post that she was going to a social media class for realtors. And it made me just think, and I was like, I wonder what goes on in that class. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see, but it, it just got me thinking. And I just started thinking and I was like, do you know what? I want to build a framework or I want to build a class for how I have did my social media. And please note, as I start having this conversation, I don't even have that many followers on Instagram uh, or and I don't have that many friends on Facebook, but I have been pretty intentional about how I did my social media over the years. So even though I may not have a, a big following, I still have received quite a bit of business directly from it. So I just when this, this person posted that they're going to this class, I just thought, huh, I'm going to build my framework. And I did. And so I thought, I wonder if I could teach a class. So I figured I would just do a podcast about it first and then see where that goes. So, you know, what I've noticed lately on social media is just a lot of generic content and, you know, people just posting the same thing that all the other realtors are posting. I don't know if it's like a subscription that they subscribe to, but I follow a lot of realtors. And so I see like on certain days, everybody posting the same thing. Now, like I said, I follow a lot of realtors. I don't know if, you know, the public or the consumer is following a lot of realtors. I had to have to say they probably have five or six that are in their friends groups that they follow. So I just started looking at that. And I'm like, who do I follow? Like, who are those people that I follow out there? And, and what do they do? And, and very rarely am I ever following somebody who's just sharing other people's content. Um, people that we follow are usually people that are very original. They post their thoughts on what they think. So that's what I wanted my uh, social media to be about. I, I rarely ever share something that somebody else has posted. I've always used it for my original thoughts, um, my original content. And so I always really want to make sure that that's a representation of me. And so I want to keep it original. So let's first off by what well, we're going into social media. I want to start off with like, why social media? Anytime I'm doing something, I always want to ask myself why. And so are we using social media for a form of entertainment? And there's times we are that would just be scrolling through um, social and just consuming people's content. There's sometimes we're going on to social for educational stuff. Like there are people that, you know, doctors um, and business owners that are, are sharing stuff that I feel like is educational. Um, and then there's using social media to be the content creator. There's getting your, you know, information out there so that people are consuming it. So why social media for me? And as we go through this, this is just, I'm telling you my framework on my thoughts. There's no right to this. There's no wrong to this. It's just, I hear agents often talk about how they don't know how to post on social media. And so I'm just telling you what I do because I post quite a bit. So why social media for me is first, I want to say it's a leg of my business. So it's a form, it's a, it's a way that I get business. Now, I am going to say that I don't think it's something that you should focus heavily on to get most of your business. Why, why I say this is I was recently had a, um, I was talking to an agent. I was on my back patio and I was on the phone with an agent and he's at a brokerage. And he said that basically their, their, their business model or what they teach the new agents is just post on social. And that's how you're going to get your business. And I'd asked him, I said, do you really think, how many homes do you want to close this year? And he's like, yeah, you know, 15 to 20. And I said, do you think that you're going to get, you're going to close 15 to 20 deals this year from your Instagram? And he was like, no. So I was like, this is definitely a, a byproduct. Like, I do think that you need to be posting regularly, but I don't know if this would be my way to say I was going to go get 15 or 20 deals my first year in the business. Meaning I would be going doing open houses, reaching out to the people that you know, knocking doors, calling expireds, whatever. Like that stuff's very, uh, you know, get in front of people type stuff. And so I look at social media as like a, a byproduct. Like, hey, it's 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 free. So why would we not be doing it? But it's not, I mean, if I said I wanted to go close 40 deals from this, that wouldn't be how I got my business. Now, there's people that are much more influential than I am or have a much bigger following. So this that might be for them, but I'm just telling you my story. So when I was talking to this kid, I just told him, hey, keep doing what you're doing, sharing your stories, posting your content. But I think this is a byproduct, meaning will you get one or two deals or three deals this year from this? Probably but are you going to go get your 30 or 40 that you want or 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 build a big book of business quickly? I don't know. So I just want to go through my thought process on social media because there's always 
there's always what are other people doing and how can I do it? Meaning there's there's things that people are doing where they're spending a lot of money on stuff, like mass advertising. And then I think of it like, how could I do this on a smaller scale with a smaller budget? So let's talk about like, there's realtors out there right now that do TV commercials. That's very expensive and that's how they get their business. I look at my email videos that go out to my database and my leads. All my video emails that go out to my the people that I know, I consider those like, that's my commercial. They're getting a commercial from me. They know me. So that's my commercial. Now, my magnets that go out to my database or my network and my magnets and my postcards, that to me is like a billboard. If you drive down the freeway, you see a lot of billboards, you see realtor billboards. So I figure my magnet being in someone's fr on their fridge or the postcards that go into the mail every month to them that they just throw away. That to me, it's the same. Like people will tell me, hey, Chris, people just throw those away. And I'm like, yeah, but when I drive by a billboard, I just drive by the billboard. So like if they just get my postcard and throw it away, that's somebody who knows me. That's my billboard in my head. Um, so radio, people advertise on radio. I have a podcast. So it's like, what can we do that's not as expensive that to the people that you know is kind of the same? It's the same really like process. So now let's go into social media. So I look at any of the messenger side of social media as my CRM. So like on Facebook, the messenger or on Instagram, the direct messages, that's my CRM. That's a way that I can uh, message people quickly. So the same as like my CRM would follow up with people. I can use my, I, I can use the message portion of these uh, social platforms to be my CRM. Now the post on, you know, on, on my social, any of the posts that to me, is like a business card. And so that to me is the new version of a business card. Now, if somebody asked me for my business card and I gave them a business card, that's probably going in the floorboard of their car or it's just going to go in their wallet and one day they're going to clean out their wallet and they're going to throw it away. Like there's really, it's really an old school model. Now, I'm not saying I don't have business cards. I do, but it's not how I would, if somebody asked me, and I was taught this many years ago, if somebody asked me for a business card, I don't even carry business cards on me. So I, I'm, I'm telling the truth. When they say, hey, can I have a business card? I say, hey, I don't have one. I pull up my phone and I say, can I get your number? I'll text you my information. And that's how I know I have their information. But so to me, posting on, let's say like Instagram, that is like your business card. So I would rather, instead of getting someone's business card or giving a mine, I would rather follow them and have them follow me on Instagram. And then they have all my contact information, a way to direct message me. They have my phone number, my website. And then also... They're going to be able to go through and see my content on there. And that is my business card. And so that's the, that's actually a better version of a business card because they're actually seeing who, um, like what I do, what I say, how I think. And then the stories portion of social, the, 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 the stories that you post that expire in 24 hours, that to me is like a reality show. Like that is a reality show. If, if we're watching people like, on TV right now, people have reality shows and we're watching them. And we don't really even, we don't know the people. And they're giving us such a fraction of their life that we think is their whole life, but it's not because it's all we see. So we think that's all they're into, what they're doing. And they're just giving us like a, a, a very minimal look into their life. And it's very calculated, the story that they're telling us. So I look at the stories on social as our... Um, reality show and, and and produce it that way. Like tell a story that you want the consumer or your friends to know and tell that story. And so that's the reality portion. So really, so when I, when I talk about why social media to me, it's a leg of my business and I've got that, I've got that switch in my head that thinks of it like that. Like the, the messenger side is the CRM, the posting side is my business card and the stories is my reality show. And I'm delivering the, the reality that I want the, the show that I want them to see. Um, so before I go into more of this, I want to just say a, a, a few stories. Cause like I said, I've always been pretty calculated, calculated about my social media. And I've had Facebook since I was about 22 and I'm, I'm super thankful that I saw this right out the gate. I hope that more younger people see this because they're going to get older and become a different version of the self. And they're just in a world that everything's documented as they grow up. Like I'm actually super thankful that you know, we didn't have, I, I, I didn't have a phone when I was in high school and um, I, I didn't have any social media. Uh, I don't think I had any, I don't think I had a Facebook until I was like maybe 19 or 20. 
And so, but I was thankful that I always knew that this was still like a representation of myself and it was more of like a brand of myself. So I was, like I said, I was very calculated and I'm thankful because there's some stories that I'd like to tell you just really quickly, because I want to bring this back of this is a leg of my business. This is how I get business and uh, how I would class. So when we close transactions in our office, we have a source of how we got that business. And if, if somebody, if we, if somebody messaged me on Instagram and we ended up closing a transaction with them, if we don't have their phone number and we never had their address, that to me is we close that through social media. Meaning I was not contacting that person in any way. I wasn't mailing them. I wasn't texting them or calling them. The only way I was ever engaging with them would have been through them following me on social media. So if someone hits me up, um, and direct messages and we I help them buy a house or sell a house. And that was the first, you know, that was how they got in contact with me and I wasn't sending them anything. On my spreadsheet, I would source that as social media. Now, if a past client of mine messages me and I have their address and I have their phone number and I've been sending them stuff in the mail and I've been texting them quarterly, if I've been doing that and they just message me through Instagram and they say, hey, Chris, call me, I wanna sell my house. I don't classify that as that Jill came through social media. I just, in my head, would classify that as they were message, messaging me through that platform the same that they would text me. And so that's how I would um, you know, categorize whether or not I actually got business from social media. So here's just a few stories, and I have many, but I'm just going to give you a few because I want you to connect this to, like, this does get you business if you do it correctly. So I think of Jamie. Uh, Jamie messaged me one day and said on social and said, Hey, Chris, my realtor retired. And I wanted to interview you or, or have you over to talk about selling my house. So I went over there. And when I was over there, she told me once again, my realtor retired. So I got to find another realtor. She informed me that her husband's really good friend is a realtor. And when people tell me that I don't go too far into that conversation, uh, but she just said, Hey, I, I'm, I'm just looking for a realtor. Well, I just took over. I, I listed that property. We sold it. I then helped her buy a property and in the middle of uh, helping her buy the new property, she told me, hey, Chris, I used you because you're you're so positive. And it's interesting that she said that. Now, let me back up a bit. I knew Jamie from, I went to grade school with her and high school with her. And I don't know if I really ever spoke to Jamie in high school. Um, and I definitely never spoke to her after high school. So the only way that we were still in, the only way we were we were seeing each other's lives were through social media. And so I want to start there. But when she said, hey, Chris, I used you because you're so positive on 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 social. I went through and I started looking. I'm like, am I really positive on social? Like, I don't think I'm actually positive on social. So I started going through my social and I was like, I'm not actually positive. I just don't vent like other people. Like, I just I don't post like if my AC went out or my my car got hit or I'm just it's not my that's not my form of community. I don't use social for like that venting platform like a lot of people do. So I was like, I don't think I'm actually positive. I just don't think I use it the same way that other people do. Uh, but not only did I sell her house, I helped her buy a house. She referred me to her aunt Jackie. I helped her sell two houses and she's referred me to other people. But if I didn't have social media and do it probably effectively or intentionally, I don't think I would have ever got that business. And I'm so thankful for that business. Uh, Jasmine's another person actually went to grade school with her and high school with her. But like I said, I don't think I ever really communicated with her in high school and definitely never did after high school, but we were connected on uh, social and uh, she reached out to me and it, it's, it's so interesting how like I helped her, I helped her sell a house uh, no, I helped her buy a house and then I helped her sell that house and then I helped her buy another house and she's referred me to many people. And so those are other, th those are just things where you're like, wow, like that really happened. Now, let me back that up on how Jasmine and I ended up meeting up again. And so she had posted on social media and this is, we're going to take the story back. When I say a CD, you're going to be like, when was this? And this was a while ago. But on, on Facebook, she had posted, I want to buy the Justin Timberlake CD. And so I don't know what this was, maybe nine years ago. She said she wanted the Justin Timberlake CD. And I was just thinking, you know, like she was a single mom, had a few kids. She's a teacher. And I just thought, man, that would be cool. Like 
just to send her that. And I knew my wife was probably going to be getting that CD. So I had messaged her. It was something like this. I had messaged her and said, hey, my wife's going to be going, you know, my, my wife will be getting that probably today at Target when she goes. And he's just kind of joking, you know, she's probably going to buy a few things that she doesn't need while she's there like most people. So would love to get that for you. Send me your address. And I think she was just perplexed. And she's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, she sent me her address. And then I mailed that to her. And then it was probably a year later, she called me and said, or she messaged me and said that she wanted to buy a house. Well, when I was helping her buy a house, she told me that her dad's a realtor. Once again, I don't ask many questions in those scenarios. So I helped her buy that house. Like I said, sell that house, buy another one. She's helped me. She's referred me to many people, but that's how that, you know, dialogue happened. So it's not as if she just like directly reached out to me and said, I want to buy a house. I had actually you know, meld her that CD. And that's how I had started the communication with her again, but just thought it was really cool. You know, and like I said, I've got a lot of stories and, uh, but it, this is just an, I'll, I'll give you probably two more. Um, John, I used to skate with him back in the day. I was a, a, a skateboarder when I was younger and I used to skate with this, this guy, John. Well, we, I don't know his address, don't know his phone number. And he actually hit me up about a week ago on Instagram. And he said, Hey dude, just want to let you know, I own a house right now. And I'm thinking about buying an investment property and see that you have investment properties and just want to talk about it. So through messenger, we're going back and forth. And he's like, what do I need to do? And I'm explaining to him what he needs to do next. And that's really cool to see. Cause I feel like in the next year or so I'll be helping John buy an investment property. And even though our relationship was from many, many, I'm almost 20 years ago. Like we haven't seen each other in over 20 years. But just through how social works anymore, we follow our old friends. And he reached out to me through one of my stories that I posted. And so that's just really cool to see that that's going to turn into business from someone that I knew in my past that is now probably going to be doing business with me. So the point of this is, is you definitely, like I said, a CRM is you would want to go back and start. Some people would say, like, why would I follow any of my old high school friends or coworkers? And um, I was recently talking to an agent who doesn't really do anything on social. It really just doesn't. And he does all internet leads. And I asked him, I was like, dude, like you've got to start doing more like referral business. You got to start doing more on your social. And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, dude, you've lived here your whole entire life and you're 40. Like you're going to get, you know, probably three or four pieces of business a year right now from this. And someone could say three or four pieces of business a year. That's not a lot, but I'm like, that's a lot just for using something that we're already going to use. Like something that we're, probably wasting too much time on already. Like, why wouldn't we use it at least for somewhat of our benefit? So that's kind of getting all the people that you knew in the past in there and people that you know in there. Now, I just want to give you a story and someone could say, hey, Chris, this is super random, but this will go kind of back into my business card conversation is I was at Mellow Mushroom about three months ago and my wife and I were sitting at the bar at Mellow Mushroom and we were eating and <clears throat> we were talking about um, her and I were talking about going to this comedy show in like a month and the people next to us sitting at the bar, husband and wife, they were like, Oh, we're going to that show too. So they were, they kind of were listening to our conversation. Totally fine. Right. And they started talking to us about that show and they were going the night after we were going, it was a two part show. And anyway, so we started talking, he, the husband moved over and started talking to me. He kind of went around the bar, sat next to me. So the lady was talking to my wife and Mike was talking to me and, before he left, I said, Hey, I, like, what's your, uh, what's your Facebook? And I was just trying to read the room on age. And so I thought like that would be something that he had. And so I said, what's your Facebook? So I add him as a friend on Facebook. And then later on, he added me when he left. And so why I did that, though, was like I said, I'm very intentional. Like I could, like, what would have been weirder? We're sitting at Mellow Mushroom eating and we're talking like that would have been super weird. I, I just think that would have been weird. I never once said I was a realtor in this conversation. Never did. That would have been weird for me to hand him a card when I was leaving. Like, hey, dude, like call me if you ever need to buy or sell a house. Like, I just don't want to be that guy. So like, why wouldn't we take our new formats that we have? So when I said my Instagram is my business card, it is. So before we left, I was just like, hey, what's your like, let me find you on Facebook. I found him right there. He's like, that's me. I added him as a friend. Well, since I added him as a friend, when he left, he probably went on his Facebook, just burning some time, saw that I added him, he added me. Well, I have his house on the market right now pending at about uh, $3.95, I believe. 
And we just wrote a contract last night, I think for, uh, was it 678, something like that, that we're going under contract on. So how this happened though, was about two weeks ago, he messaged me on Facebook and he said, Hey dude, I can clearly see that you're a realtor by everything that you post. And we're thinking about selling our house and buying a new one. So wanted to talk to you. And I messaged him back and I was like, Hey, let's get together. Do you have tomorrow? And he's like, yep. And I was like, look, can you do early? He's like, yep. So we went to breakfast, him and his wife went to breakfast. It was so interesting. We sit down and we go to breakfast and this like conversation just picked up. Like we were the, you know, just like really good friends. Like we'd known each other forever. And we had met about three or four months ago at Mellow Mushroom and never talked after that. All he had seen was my post. I had seen his post and I'm doing two deals right now with this guy. I'm sure he's going to refer me over the years. So how crazy is that? The two pending transactions right now are from Mellow Mushroom, me being there and just saying, Hey, what's your, like, let, let me find you on Facebook real quick before I left. And I, I call that shooting my shot. It's the same as like when somebody does an open house, I always will tell people when you do an open house, if you can't get their information from them, fine. Like that's fair. Like they don't have to give you their information, but if you didn't, if you didn't ask them for their information, then you didn't shoot your shot. So all I ever wanted to know was I shot my shot. So at open houses, I would keep scoring. Like, did I try to get their information? And if I tried, I did my job. If I didn't try, I was like, wow, I just seriously sat here for three hours. Two people came through. I let them casually look and I was so nervous and I didn't ask them for anything. They left. And now I just wasted my time. Don't have their number. They're never going to call my business card number. I do know that. So I just always looked at the stuff like, did I shoot my shot? Did I try? And so in that situation, I'm not saying I do that everywhere I go, but we were having a conversation right there. I wanted to keep it going, added him as my friend on Facebook, and that's how that book of that that's how that business came about so just start looking at opportunities now when you go to parties or when you meet people to start adding them on social media and then now i would say now you have to start delivering some content so like he when he messaged me it was hey i can clearly see you're a realtor and i don't know maybe that was something where he's like man you post a lot about real estate but that's why i'm on there so, you know what I mean? So we started off with this, why am I on social media? It's a leg of my business. And so I post about that. Do people unsubscribe from me or unfollow me because they don't want to see my content? Yeah. And that's fine, right? I unsubscribe and unfollow from other people. So I don't look at it as like, I've got to cater to everybody. This is my platform. And I talk about what I want to talk about. And if people want to follow what they can, and if they don't, they don't, but it's all fair. So let's go into some traps right now. I want to talk about some traps. Um, there's content creator versus consumer. And so I want to go into this just for a bit, but there's two versions of social media. There's the people who are always consuming social media and there's the people producing the content. And I'm, I'm sure I don't have any statistics, but I'm sure that majority, a heavy, heavy majority just consume content. Like they go on social media while they're at work at nighttime and they just scroll through and they probably never post anything. They just scroll through, maybe post something here and there, but they're just looking at other people's content. Then you've got the content creators. You've got the people who they go on to social and they want to publish stuff. They want to publish their content so other people consume it. So understand which one you are. And you can be both. It's just, I want to, this is me. I want to make sure that I'm not a, a scroller too much because social media is trying to consume us. It wants all of our attention. So if you're scrolling all day, you're a consumer. If you're making videos or, or if you're doing stuff and you're producing content on there, you're a content creator. Like I said, I, I definitely still go on and scroll, but I just try to make sure that it's not a, it's not a platform for me to consume too much. Um, it's a platform for me to publish my content for other people to consume. So just, just understand as you're going through it. So some limiting beliefs, and we're going to start going into some posting uh, structures and how to post um, effectively on a daily basis. But let's start off with some limiting beliefs. because I think we all go through them. The first thing is going to be like, nobody cares. Like that's going to be something that goes through your head is like, nobody cares what I post. And they do, you know, maybe not as many people that watch a reality show on TV, but there are a good portion. Remember like the stories on your Instagram, like that is a reality show and you can control the message. You'd be shocked with how many people reach out to you. But I went through the same thing, like nobody cares and and they do. And how I know is 
I'm just going to give you some stories. Like when I first started out, I, I do a lot of my morning routine on my stories. And, you know, when I first started out and doing my dues paid and, and someone else does the dues pays, like I, I got that from someone else. But, you know, I just when I do my workout in the morning, I post dues paid and I started posting that. And then I had people reach out to me on Messenger and through Instagram and say, hey, man, just want to let you know, like I started working out again or I love seeing, you know, your your health journey. And I had I had quite a few people reach out to me and tell me that that was something that they were proud of or that they started going back to the gym. And so you do have people that are following you. So do remember that maybe it's not a ton, but there are people that are following you. So I realized that right when I started posting that stuff, I was like, oh, wow. And then I started noticing other people that follow me started putting dues paid on their stuff. Like I said, I did not create this. Like I, I saw somebody else doing it, but I started seeing some of my friends and some people that follow me start posting that in the morning. Um, and then I started having people, you know, post dues paid, and then they would tag me in it. And that was super cool because you're just like, okay, like we're effectively holding, we almost had a little accountability group going. We never even used any words, but through social media, we were holding each other accountable through this dues paid. And so also it was about three days ago, I had somebody, it, it, it was my third one in about four days, I believe. And it this is, this is wild when you think of it, but I've had three people in one week reach out to me on my Bible study that I do in the morning. And, and the messages that I've got from these three people were just so made me want to cry when I got these messages. And I just realized, man, like, I just post a picture of my Bible and my journal in the morning and I post, you know, I just post that and I post the time. And sometimes it's four 30 in the morning and sometimes it's eight 30 in the morning. Sometimes it's 10 in the morning, but like I post just that that's something that I try to do and I try to do it daily and I post about it. But I got three messages in the last week from people who have told me stuff about what they're going through. And I was just, I had chills when I got one of the messages and thought, man, like there are definitely people who follow you. And so when I, when I, when I, when I hear people say like, nobody cares, I'm like, yeah, maybe they, maybe they don't. Like, I will always say, I probably annoy people with my stories and there's some people that I inspire and I would just rather focus on, I'm doing it because I like doing it and I like posting it, but I'd rather focus on who I inspire. And so those are the two things that I clearly saw was through like the dues paid through my working out through my Bible study in the morning. And then realtors asked me a lot of questions on my story. So I realized like there's a lot of realtors that follow me when I post my solds, they'll ask me how I got that business and we'll go back and forth on some stuff. But um, just remember as you're going through this, that pe people crave authentic people. Like you don't have to be someone different. I was talking to another agent uh, probably about five days ago and he, he was like, hey, I, I think I might have to, do some things differently because of this. And I was like, Hey, just remember, dude, like, don't, don't change who you are. I mean, do so if you feel like you're compelled to do so. Like if you feel like you need a new version of yourself, do so, but like, don't just change because you think that you need to change. Like that's going to be noticed if you're putting on a front and then later they see you and they're like, that's not who he is. Then it's going to be noticed. So just be who you are, be an authentic person. And, um, that's just, you know, that's what I want to say. And I'm, I'm also very thankful that we're in this world now where lack of production could be better. I feel like like 10 years ago, your videos had to be like professionally done. Just everything had to be so edited. And we got into this world just through, um, I don't know if it was more of social media or just people not wanting to edit stuff anymore. But I really like the new world that we're going into where you can just post your stuff and be raw. It doesn't have to be edited. You know, it doesn't have to have the best lighting. Just the content means more than the production. And I feel like 10 years ago, the production was better than the content. Now I feel like the content uh, is better than the production. So I just focus on getting stuff out there. I don't focus on like how high the quality is. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to embarrass myself, but I also, um, you know, I just, I just post. And like I said, we talked about this at the very beginning, but think of the people that you follow and why you follow them. Like write down right now, five people that you follow, like people that you like feel like, you know, maybe they're like celebrity status and you feel like, you know them, but they would never know who you are. Think of their cadence on how they post, what they post about. And, and like I said, mine are like 
doctor, like some doctors I follow right now, and some health people, business owners, realtors that I respect, motivational speakers. And I think of how they're posting and what I like about it. But start looking at it from that lens. So here's here's to me, like I said, the stories to me are a reality show. And so for me, my reality show is every morning, I just document my morning routine. And that's just, and there's, there's no wrong or right to this. Like I said, like, it's just the stories is my reality show. And my reality is I wake up in the morning and I do my Bible study and journal. I then either go to the gym or do about an hour walk around my neighborhood. I then will usually do my cold plunge. I'll then sit in the sun for about 30 minutes. So that's my routine in the morning and I post it. So it's like my reality show. And I'll have hit, people hit me up like yesterday as I was going to bed, I got a message from my cold plunge post that I post every morning. It was on my cold plunge story, I should say, on my post. And the person who messaged me through my story said, I can't wait until I have a house that I can put my plunge into. And I messaged him back and said, I know the person who can help you get that house. So that that message came in last night. That was a, I posted that story in the morning. And at night, that's what I saw. And so I messaged him this morning. And so I'm going to see where this goes today. But here's the deal. Like what's so crazy, this is all leading into this is, this was somebody that I used to skate with back when I was about 17, maybe 18. So I haven't seen him in 20 plus years. I have not seen him in 20 plus years. Don't have his phone number. Don't have his address. But he follows me on Instagram. And it was my cold plunge post in the morning that he commented on. said, can't wait till I have a house where I can put my plunge. And now the conversation is starting. And I know, I know that the next year, to, year or two that he's going to be moving into a house. And I'm going to say that it was he was following me on Instagram and it was one of my it was one of my stories that got that conversation started. So, like I said, in the morning, my 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 routine is like my reality show. So I post that. I also want to say, and I don't know if this is, you know, I, no one's really ever told this to me, but I, I've heard it through casual conversation with people. Is I, I feel like people are craving discipline. I feel like those people out there that are disciplined people, people want to follow them because I think. I think everybody wants a little bit more discipline in their life. And so if you have it in your life, start posting about it. But that morning routine that I have is more of like, it's what I do to keep myself together. It's discipline that I have. And so I post it every morning because people see that. As Like I said, it might annoy some people, but like they'll always be like, Chris is disciplined in the morning with what he does. And how I know that this story is a reality show is we did a... um we rented out a movie theater a few months ago, the Mario Brothers movie, and a lot of my past clients were there, all my past clients, you know, not all of them, but all of them that were there were past clients. And afterwards, people would come up to me and they either talked to me about the cold plunge, my Bible study, how early I get up. Like that was almost the topic of almost everyone's conversation. So it's like, man, like these people really do follow me in a way like a reality show. So it's a really good one, two punch because I'm like, you know, they're, they're getting my marketing from me on, I sell real estate. And then they're following my reality show of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's how I'm staying connected to them. So I like, I just want to mention that I, I think people are craving discipline. So if you can actually uh, implement that discipline into your life and get a morning structure, maybe start posting about that and, and help people along the way with their journey, because that, that, that posting of that cadence every morning, I feel has helped a lot of people. Um, So let's talk about now, and then while you're doing your stories, uh, a way, kind of a technique where you could gain followers from doing this is you could tag where you're at. So if you're like eating at a restaurant or you're at the gym, you could tag that location and then people might look up that um, hashtag or whatever or that location and, and you might gain some followers from that. But I don't really do that very well. Like I said, mine's more about getting my content out to my audience. I mean, there are some times where I'll do it, but that is what somebody would say to do if you were trying to gain followers from posting on your stories. Now let's go into your post. So like, and anybody who knows Instagram, you know, your stories, your stories expire every 24 hours. And, and let actually, let's go back to the stories. And I'm just going to tell you uh, how I, you know, kind of how I look at those stories. And I was just talking to my buddy the other day and he was, we were talking about massive action and he was like, dude, you're just, you're always on the go. And I'm like, I'm actually really not. I'm just, I'm focused on a few key things in my life. And then that's really it. And everything else is pretty willy nilly. But he said, but you're always on the go. And I said, no, it's not that. And he's like, how do you, how do you do this every day? And I said, well, I just look at it. Like I've gamified my stories. And 
you know, like I said, I, I, I get up in the morning, do my Bible study, a journal, and then I go on a walk or go to the gym for an hour. And then I do my cold plunge and then I sit by the sun, but I look at it like they expire every 24 hours. So I, I kind of look at my stories often in the day, like not, not often, but I look through them and I'm like, I'm just trying to better myself and keep up with my story. And so I always post that cadence every day because I'm like, if I'm posting that cadence every single day, I'm trying to keep up with it because it expires the next day and I post it again. And even though I might be annoying to some people, it actually holds me accountable in many ways because I feel now obligated to post that every day. And there have been some days, and I don't know if this sounds crazy, but there's been some days where I do not want to actually do that routine. And I do it because the stories on Instagram is holding me accountable because I'm like, no, like people follow me and watch me do that. And I'm, I'm thankful that it's something that's productive because sometimes it's really the Instagram that's holding me accountable because I'm like, no, I want to, I want to keep that on my story. It's like those expire every 24 hours and you got to do it again. It really is a, a good game in my mind where anything you did the day before is gone and you got to get up again and do it that day. And you got to do it over. So now let's go to post. So post to me or more. This is something, like I said, it's more of a business card. So these are things that you want to post where when somebody's like, if you like, just think of it through, like if you met somebody the first time and they followed your page and they started going through, like, what would they see? And so to me, that's, you know, what story do you want to tell? We all want to tell a different story. Mine is I talk about, uh, I, I put my testimonials on there for my past clients. I'll put some deals that I've closed on there. I'll put some agents testimonials on there because I do coach agents. Um, I'll put my rental properties on there that I've purchased because that's a story that I tell. So when they go through there, they should see like, okay, testimonials from his past clients, testimonials from realtors that he's helping, uh, deals that he's closing, rental properties he's buying. But like, if you go through that, my, my, you know, kind of my health and fitness journey, you can kind of see who I am. So that's why I said it's a good form of like, that's a business card. So that's how you would post that stuff. Now your reels that you would post, um, you know, that's also something you want to do. Now the reels can be, you know, longer video content and, you know, I'll put some of my podcast on there or some of my longer form educational videos, but start telling stories on your reels, start telling a story, talk about a past client that, you know, you helped buy a house and the struggles they went through and how you helped them overcome them or tell a story about a client that you sold their house for 25,000 over a list price and how you got them more for their house or tell a story. I had a, a lender call me one time and he's like, Hey, I follow you on Instagram and you should tell this story. And it was a deal where uh, the client backed out because I had her do a plumbing inspection. It was an historic district and she backed out and he had actually emailed me. He's like, I've actually never heard of a realtor doing like a pipe, a scope inspection on the plumbing. And I was like, well, in these historic districts, I always recommend it. And she ended up backing out because I recommended it. He's like, Chris, I like what you do because you're always trying to do your due diligence at a level where you want that person to back out. And I feel like, I was like that's, that's what I feel my job is as a realtor is not to sell them a house. It's to get them all the data and information in front of them to see if they should buy that house. And so he's like, Hey, you should tell that story. So I remember telling that story and it was basically on, you know, how I helped this, you know, get information in front of this client so that she would back out. And I was telling it in a very exciting way of like, and most agents might be like, Oh, my client backed out of this deal. You know, and I, I told it from a very optimistic side of this is why you should hire me is because I am going to try to get you to back out of a property. If I don't think that it's something that's, you know, a proper house for you. So your reels should just be like educational if you're in real estate and just maybe longer format videos. Uh, but here's also what I would say to start following some realtors that you respect and just duplicate what they do. I mean, you can't tell their stories specifically, but see what they're saying about the market and just, I mean, if that's a truthful statement in your market, just do the same thing. I mean, if that's just data and they're using their personality to tell, tell that data, you do the same thing. But I actually, I follow some realtors from that lens of not that I'm duplicating them. I just want the, the they're very, uh, I like the content that they put out. So I want to follow them because it helps spark like things that I could be doing in my business. And so here, let's talk about once again, like what not to post now is just unoriginal content. I would be very cautious. I always would think from the lens of when you post something like, is this beneficial? Anytime you post something, I would think, is this beneficial? And you go with that, with whatever you think, you know. but just, is this beneficial? Just ask yourself that question. If the answer is no or maybe, if it's a maybe, don't post it. Is this beneficial if it's yes, post it. 
and then just be willing to be vulnerable on social media. Like that's where people were overthinking it. Oh, well, what if I mess up or what if that, or what if that, and I get it. Like, I, I totally get it. We all don't want to just like flop on video, but just start getting comfortable with telling stories, be comfortable with your audience, realize that they're not expecting that much of you. And so just be vulnerable in front of the camera in front of your audience. And I'm just, I'm super thankful for social. Um, it's just a great way anymore to get your content out there. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that you guys, you know, learned a little bit from this, but that's how I put on my Facebook and my Instagram. That's how I, you know, that's my framework. That's my thought process. That's how I post my content. And so, you know, I want to do this. Like I said, when I saw that Instagram message or, or not message, but post from somebody and thought, you know, I don't know if I teach a class on this. So I thought I would just do, um, you know, I just do a podcast on this first, but I might actually put together a class on social media and then how to do video and make that more of like a two, three hour class. Cause I think a lot of people just don't, they, they, even if they knew the content to do, they wouldn't know how to, you know, they wouldn't know how to do the lighting. They wouldn't know how to do the editing or the captions. So I'm thinking I'm going to put together a class like that in the future. So anyways, hope you guys learned something from this podcast today. And I hope you guys all have a great day.